with the twin baby, it was very different. They would not touch it and only approached it after some days, and then only when it was held by Miss Selsor or me. If either of us wanted to do or get something, and we handed over the bundle to one of the house children to hold, there was a stampede of men and women off the veranda, out of the yard, and over the fence, if need be. That was exceedingly comic, but most convincing as to the reality of the terror and the horror in which they held the thing. Even its own mother could not be trusted with the child. She would have killed it. She never betrayed the slightest desire to have it with her, and after a few days nursing and feeding up, she was anxious to go back to her mistress, who, being an enlightened woman, was willing to have her if she came without the child. The main horror is undoubtedly of the child, the mother being killed more as a punishment for having been so intimately mixed up in bringing the curse, danger, and horror into the village than for anything else. The women went back by the road that had been cut for her coming, and would have to live for the rest of her life as an outcast, and, for a long time, in a state of isolation, in a hut of her own, into which no one would enter. Neither would anyone eat or drink with her, nor partake of the food or water she had cooked or fetched. She would lead the life of a leper, working in the plantation by day, and going into her lonely hut at night, shunned and cursed. I tried to find out whether there was any set period for this quarantine, and all I could arrive at was that if, and a very considerable if, a man were to marry her, and she were subsequently to present to society an acceptable infant, she would be, to a certain extent, socially rehabilitated. But she would always be a woman with a past, a thing the African, to his credit, be it said, has no taste for. The women's own lamentations were pathetic. She would sit for hours singing or rather mourning out of a kind of dirge over herself. Yesterday I was a woman, now I am a whore, a thing all people run from. Yesterday they would eat with me, now they spit on me. Yesterday they would, they would talk, with, talk to me with a sweet mouth, now they greet me only with curses and execrations. They have smashed my basin, they have torn my clothes, and so on and so on. There was no complaint against the people for doing these things, only a bitter sense of injury against some superhuman power that had sent this withering curse of twins down on her. She knew not why, she sang, I have done this, I have not done that, and highly interesting information regarding the moral standpoint, a good deal of it was. I have tried to find out the reason of this widely diffused custom, which is the cause of such a pitiful waste of life. For in addition to the mother and children being killed, it often leads to other people, totally unconcerned in the affair, being killed by the relatives of the sufferer on the suspicion of having caused the calamity by witchcraft. And, until one gets hold of the underlying idea and can destroy that, the custom will be hard to stamp out, in a district like the great Niger Delta. But I have never been able to hunt it down, though I am sure it is there, and a very quaint idea it undoubtedly is. The usual answer is, it was a custom of our fathers, but that always and only means we don't intend to tell.